Hello, everyone. Hello. I'm putting the link to the uh, agenda doc in Zoom chat. So if you're here, please let us know that you're here in that. Hello. Hello. Hey, uh, just one question. Should I add my name? Oh, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> You're welcome. Hello. Should we get started? That's good. Who wants to take the, the reins or you want me to do it? I can do it for the first half, but I, I got to drop off at 11.30 today. Okay. Yeah. Um, cool. So usual usual um, announcement um, this meeting is being recorded it will be uploaded and made publicly available um, this meeting adheres to the LF and OpenSSF um, core conduct as well as antitrust policies uh, more details on the OpenSSF repo if you, are, you want to find out more details um Welcome, new friends. Um, does anyone want to introduce themselves or maybe reintroduce themselves if you, you haven't been here for a while? Yeah, uh, so this is my first meeting. Uh, very recently started some contribution to uh, the project. And yeah, I'm a senior security engineer at a UK-based company called Tide. And yeah, I mostly deal with supply chain security stuff. I've been a speaker and trainer at a few places. But yes, uh, have been a passive uh, like attendee or passive consumer of information for some time. But yeah, trying to be active contributor now. Awesome, Megan Kumar. Uh, what was the company again? I, I think I missed it. I wanted to write it down in the notes. Oh yeah, uh, it's Tide Platform, T-I-D-E. Oh, okay. Cool. 
cool. What what kind of problems are you looking to 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 solve or what what keeps you up at night usually? Yeah, so mostly uh for me, I want to make developers' life easier when it comes to security. So as much as I can implement the invisible security approach in the daily day to day workflow of developers, that that would be my core goal that I am working towards. So that it does not become a bottleneck to do security. Awesome. Great. Um, anyone else? I think we should be good. Um, cool. First item we have on the agenda. Oh, just quickly also. This is the maintenance meeting, so we're just gonna run through different issues, just short chat about stuff. Um FYI, there's also a community meeting and office hours. So uh, more details on the Quap community page. Um, but just FYI, this is a maintenance meeting. We have a community meeting as well, office hours. Um, which brings us to our relevant first issue from Ben on consolidating office hour times. Do um, you want to chat, chat to this a little bit, Ben? Yeah, so there was a little bit of a mix up uh, last week or the week before, I think, where um, my calendar got out of sync or the open SSF calendar did or something. And so I, you know, announced office hours in the chat and Parth was like, um, it's not on my calendar. Uh, so Parth and I talked about it a little bit and, um, we felt like, you know, the off, the office hours are fairly lightly attended right now. Um, and so just for simplicity's sake, it might be better to just pick a time and keep a consistent time. Um, and so I just opened an issue uh, to, I think I proposed 11 a.m. Eastern on alternate Fridays, because um, that's somewhat friendly to both your, uh, EMEA and all of the Americas. Um, it's not obscenely early in the West Coast. It's not too late, although it is, you know, five o'clock on a Friday uh, in Central Europe. Europe. Um, so I just wanted, you know, I don't think we need like full, uh, you know, plus ones from every maintainer, but I wanted to at least, you know, get a, a general consensus to move that. And then um, we would start that with the next office hours, which I think are this week. Yes. So this Friday would be the first time in the new slot. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds good. I mean, a plus one the the issue. I will ask OpenSSF staff to update the calendar, and I'll awesome. put out a a blog post and other communication about that. Um. Okay. Next one we have is issue fifteen oh five. Um, what's the next section of critical dependency? Um, this one was initially kind of like a user interface to, well, not really user interface, but kind of a user journey of Quark to say, after ingesting all all my all my metadata, all my documents, you know, what what should be the first thing I should be looking at? Um. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I put it on the agenda. Uh huh. I put it on the uh, on the agenda. Um, basically because like I looked at it since last week. Um, thought about it for a while. Have some questions. Um, I think yeah, we I could probably build that or something. Um, what that something is, I don't really know. Um. So what I want to ask here, this group is twofold. One is, okay, what's an actionable dependency? Like, is it just like this issue is a, kind of like a brain dump or or did I kind of like miss the, the big picture of, of that? Is it an actionable dependency risk or what do we want to like show? 
I think it is a little bit of a brain dump. I would say the the uh the focus on this being more the words actionable and critical, less whether it's a dependency or whether you know it's some dependency that it fix. But really, one, what are things that are critical within your software supply chain, and two, whether these things are actionable. I think actionable both in terms of you know, here's a metric that you can go um, that a security engineer or, or executive can go drive. Okay, we like we need a better number for this. Like, we don't have S bombs for all of the software that we release. Um, or, you know, something that can be actionable more in a concrete like engineering point of view where you're using this version of of um of Open Open SSH, which is vulnerable to the CPE, uh, and that's being used by five different pieces of software or like your entire fleet. Um, perhaps that's something that you should you should be fixing. And there's a, a couple of things also I think mixed in this issue, right? So the first line is like with this new experimental REST interface, like does is it kind of like a strict requirement that we use REST there, or is it can it also just use the GraphQL API, or is it somehow can kind of tie to the REST interface? I, I think the 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 hope is the, um the GraphQL API would still be the way that you would interact with with the, the graph. I think we are thinking about this feature being exposed through the REST API. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Um cool. And the situation is like that's that's more like the how, but the what is this is supposed to be a thing that is being displayed when the ingestion happens of basically GUAC is loading up and ingesting more information. Like that's the, con the context where the user would kind of like want to get some earlier kind of actionable item from actually, you know, interacting with the platform. Is that, is that wrong? I'm referring Sorry, to this I, I, statement. Yeah. Can you can you hear me? Sorry, maybe my yeah. connection is bad. You can hear me? Okay. I'm referring to the statement. We want to enable some use cases which will provide value to users that will provide instant value upon setup of work and iteratively get better when more and more data gets ingested. So we're talking about open the application or you know some some yeah, you know, and, and then you get so, instant so... value. So it's yeah, I, I can tell you kind of like where this is coming from, and at least like the spirit of it. Um, yeah. And so, so the idea was, well, not the idea, but the, the issue that we were running into was that um, whenever we we had, we interacted with a user and said like, oh yeah, you have to ingest all your S-bombs and do all this labeling and things like that. Um, that process of like onboarding was very expensive. Uh, and so a lot of the times, like, we find that users that are experimenting with Quark are pretty much like, oh, you know, as if any technology, you want to do MVP, you want to do a POC, you want to show, like, what it can do before then saying, like, oh, yeah, well, if we invest, if we do this, like, get all our S-bombs and get integrating with all the data, data sources, then we can, like, get more out of it. Uh, I right. think the trouble was that... Um, we won like the onboarding process was just a little bit too involved. Um, so and then it was difficult for someone that was playing around a bit to get to basically show the value within the first like just spending a week or a few days playing around a bit. Um so, so you wanna, you wanna speak was, to this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, so the hope was like even if you have an incomplete data set, or like even if you have like, oh, I have like this five S bonds from this team. Um you will get these, get some information out of it. Uh, and then we, you know, as you're ingesting more and like you're iteratively improving your data quality, you will get better insights. But at least we have something where the user can spend two hours playing around a bit, at least show something out of it. Yeah. Uh, because I think the end-to-end the -end value chain is not 
something that's easily attainable today just because we're saying like, oh yeah, you did you need this amount of information to get this this amount of value. Um okay. and we want to spoof that out instead of like a, a kind of like a uh a, a function that goes like no value, no value to like one hundred percent value. We want okay. that to be kind of like a, a a more iterative process. Okay, so is it do we want to speak to that thing called instant gratification, or is that, that what the group kind of like is 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 comfortable with? When people design applications, they understand. Okay, people like instant gratifications. Is that is that somewhat the objective of of what's supposed to be built here to have some form of instant gratification, or, or is it really about like okay, here's step one, and that's kind of like a, a only a first step, and that's supposed to be visualized. What I'm trying to say is, is it about explaining and visualizing the process of Gua getting iteratively better? and showing the internals, showing the mechanism, or is it about that more kind of like classic paradigm, these days classic paradigm of saying, okay, users have very limited time if you don't get like some form of like reward to them in like less than 30 seconds, they would just leave usually. Which of the, what is more like interesting to the group? I, so I think I have an opinion on this, but I also wanna defer to, I think, pop. Yes, yeah, so I think it's more, um, I would say like, it's not about the instant gratification of opening up application application and getting some kind of result back, right? It's, it's more like, can you, it's a more of an evolving set, I guess, right? So like, okay, your critical dependency one day, you know, based on what you're doing, like as you're ingesting, inge as you're ingesting more and more data, it changes, right? Uh, changes like, okay, yeah, this, you know, turns out this other dependencies now the next week is more, it's utilized more, contains more risk because it's utilized everywhere else, right? As you're, as more and more data comes in kind of thing. So I think that's 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 kind of the goal. It's like providing an uh, ever changing, updated, okay, what is your, what is the most risky dependency or whatever in your in your software environment um, that you need to pay attention to? So that's, that's the whole point, yeah. I think. I mean, I guess what you're saying is super interesting. I don't wanna like, um, sort of bike shed or bloat this issue is probably like more um, relevant conversations that you, you guys want to have and um, that like this team should have. So deciding, finalizing a decision in an asynchronous concurrent system, which is the most, is probably like a relatively ill-defined problem. So that's what I hear from, from, from what he's saying, right? So the most might change. Um, or the most critical um in this case right so it's it's slightly a different question so what i'm trying to figure out is is it more like a doc or is it more like a app the thing here because it might be a bad idea to start with okay urgent urgent here's the most critical thing you need to act now it's kind of like command and conquer <laughs> i don't know 90s user interface but I'm trying to figure out if it's more about documenting what the platform is doing, or if it's more about like, here's something that you get for interacting with it in the first place, because that's two different things. Why being fully aware is super important to understand that there's probably like no most critical, which is a like well-defined consistent thing that's always the same. So, so my my thought is is I, I think you you have a good point around one of it is like do we like what does what does Quark do right and the documentation of like oh these are some things that we can provide you I think that is definitely one aspect but I think the other aspect is also how do I contextualize that value to my organization? Uh, like, is is Quark the right application for for me? Uh, and I think that process of integrating with the data is able to show that yes, this is something that 
would be applicable to your organization. You don't need to have, um, like, is this only something that a company of more than a like a hundred thousand employees can use versus a, a, something that you know, if you have a small development team, you can get something out of it. I think these are kind of the questions that, um someone that's trying this out would want to ask whether like, is this the right tool for my organization? Um, and right now, like the investment to figure that out is a bit too high mm -hmm. um, because our target use cases are pretty much like, yeah, I mean, just everything and then we'll be virtual sure all these. Um, I think we still want to have that, but we want to figure out like, are there any things that we can do with less? And, like, so I guess like small data versus big data, right? <laughs> Sure. Um, like, is there anything that we can do with, with a small amount of data um, and small amount of investment uh, so that users can at least validate whether the data that they have is, um, whether Guang as a tool will, will, will be suitable for them. Awesome. Yeah, I, I think um, one of the things that I did at least picture in my mind was around, like you said, you said it's kind of like whack a mole thing, right? It's almost like an interface that you should go on every day and then you set this um, to decide some actions. I think that is that is one potential um view of, of what it could be right it's mm -hmm. um almost creating a a, a a dashboard a list of a hot list that you will visit every day to say like okay you know maybe every week i'll pick up one of these things and then start working on it working on it or start exploring it uh i think that is one potential user experience that that could be, could come off this, but that may not be the only user experience. Yeah. Like a polymorphic, ever changing user interface that's reprogramming itself when new data is available. Um, yeah. I mean, like, what I'm trying to figure out is basically what to focus on because I think these are two different things, right? So making a UI or a thing. You can call it like a loading indicator because that's actually, I think, somewhat the function in terms of, okay, this platform requires just a big setup and you you want to like ingest different data sources to actually make the most use out of it. And before that, that's kind of like an empty database. Well, um, so what to kind of like show in the meantime to make sure that people understand why should they ingest all their information. Um, I think there's one problem that I understood from the issue. And then there's just like this completely like remote thing where someone just shows up on some website uh, or some conference and, and you know, stops by and you want to immediately communicate something to them because you just have like a minute. So that's a kind of like a different setting. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out like where, where in the journey do you think is the, is the focus and, and what's the like most interesting or, you know, most relevant aspect. I, I honestly like the, the loading bar thing that you talked about. <laughs> it sounds like a, a really good um, yeah. encapsulation of, of the journey, right? Yeah. Okay. So I, I can like sort of just to um like get more engagement on these questions, um sort of brainstorm some different variants that that I I thought about when reading this, right? Um, and then maybe you can navigate those and say not so much that, but more that. That would be helpful. Um, so one idea is that you have the polymorphic user interface that we have had for a long time, which is called text, right? Um, which is a, a documentation that's basically writing itself as more data becomes available, right? So you would start with some messaging platform and users would come online and see, oh, okay, this is about software supply chain attacks and 
um, okay. I understand that I know MS, what aspect of software supply chain attacks are interesting to me. And then I, you know, get some response from the GUAC documentation or the GUAC ingestion process that tells me this is how GUAC could solve that problem. Right? Something along those lines. It's more like a on the doc side of things. And on the instant gratification side of things, I think this is really the, the next the next actionable critical risk, right? It's more about where, where this issue is coming from. We say, okay, we think that you need to have a look at that now, which could be, uh, yeah, there's some ideas like um, a scorecard of, you know, it really depends on what we know about the specific user at that circumstance. So do we know, you know, their, their, their GitHub account, um, do we know something they have in common already where they say, okay, this might actually be a concern to all of them. Um, or do we kind of like ask them to give some input and, and then, you know, like show them a scorecard or, or something like that, some of those ideas. So I think these are like slightly different variants, right? Where one is really about like, okay, either alert or here's something really awesome. It's like a quick message that you can get across in like less than a minute, ideally less than 30 seconds. And the second thing is more like a living documentation where like a, a chat starts talking to you about a platform that you know is currently being bootstrapped and asks you to kind of interact with it and, and you can ask questions back and whatnot. So if you, if you, you all had to choose like one, you can delete one idea and only the second one survives, which, which, which one would you delete or which, which one would you want to survive the process? Like my my opinion is that I think the latter, right? Just like getting the instant feedback of like what what additional information, which I think I think is a little bit what is missing, right? And it's today, like I think you can in my mind, it's it's you ingest one ads bomb, right? And then we can tell you here's what we can tell you: we can tell you about individual vulnerabilities within each individual application. Then we say like, oh, if you would like to to um know which are the most critical vulnerabilities that you should work on, um, we should ingest more S bombs. So like, let's say you say like ingest twenty S bombs, then we can say okay, if you have more than twenty S bombs, then we can say like these are the ones that are shared between uh, all the S bombs, right? And then to that point is like. Maybe this is where we get more user input to say like, is this, um, maybe it's like, you know, is this a critical package? Or like, you know, we can start asking questions, users questions about that. Uh, kind of labeling the data more manually uh, uh, as well. Um, yeah, so I think my personal preference is for the, for the data kind of like interactive approach to to kind of that loading by and getting to the point where we can provide more information but also get more information from the user so that we can add more predicates to the graph to enable those 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 use cases okay more opinions Uh, I do got a run, but if if you, I will do a write up. Need... So yeah, I will do a write up. Great. My yeah, I will do a write up. So my my conclusion so far is that um, there's basically, you know, like when we could ask more people about this. I think like starting with people that built the thing, like what do you want to show first? Is probably like a useful just discussion um, because yeah, that's you know, where are users coming from? What do they know? What do they need to learn? Um, do they know what an SPOM is? Are they maybe like more interested in the name because they Googled for guacamole? I don't know, like getting some more like clarity on what you actually want to communicate and where users are coming from. I think that's, that would be good. Does that make sense? But also like if I mm -hmm. like I explicitly invite you and give you permission to hate one of the ideas that's sometimes helpful, right? If it's not like, let's do this, then maybe like, let's not do this, that, that would be good. Like, let's not do an instant gratification thing or let's not like make a chatbot. That's, that would be helpful as well. 
if you have a strong opinion in in, in that direction. I, I gotta run for now, but thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll do it right up. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, I think just uh, I agree with what Brenda was saying. Is like yeah, just uh, you know, in terms of that opinion, like I, uh, instant instant gratification, right? Like just understanding what's happening. Like so based on some S-bombs you ingest, right? It's like, okay, what is that? I get some people don't even get that point, right? It's like, what is an S-bomb, right? I, I agree with that. Like, okay, what is an S-bomb? What does that should give me? So I think just providing value there is like, okay, if, you, if you're generating S-bombs, let's say, you know, just for compliance reasons, if you, you know, you use a tool like Walk or whatever, then it's, it's giving you all this, you know, information that you could actually utilize for, you know, vulnerability management, risk management, whatever it is kind of thing. So that's, it's it's not just for compliance reasons you're generating this, this document or you know sharing it to your customers, but you can actually use it to make decisions in your environment. So I think that's you know how do we uh, yeah you know that's the goal for Guac is like you know all this metadata is out there. Let's combine it all together. You know wh whether it's soft attestations, whether it's S bombs, whether it's other attestations, right? Whatever it is, take all this information and then give you like a centralized view into what's happening in your environment. Um, so. I think, yeah, so I think that's why, like, when we started the project, I think a lot of a lot of people, I think all the users that came to us already knew what S-bombs were, so they had very different expectations, right? So it wasn't for, like, a new user to come in. It's like, I don't know what an S-bomb is. It's more for, like, I know what an S-bomb is. Um, what can you provide me from this, right? So, you know, what is it, what is it? You know what deeper insights can you provide me? So that's that's why we that's why this this idea came to be is like, you know, of um, can we go further? You know, what is the next actionable critical dependency, whatever else? But in order for that to happen, right, you need to generate you'd be generating some S bombs, and then it has to feed all that information to Guac. This way, it can tell you like, okay, based off all this information, yeah, there is, you know, this dependency is here, or this dependency is being used by all these different things. Um, you know, and based off the scorecard information, based off the vulnerability information, all this, all the stuff that we, you know, correlating, this is something that we should be focused on, right? At, at your organization, the team, whoever's responsible for it should be focused on this thing. Um, and then, you know, all those kind of things are, and where else do my vulnerabilities live? I think those are the hard questions that people don't know, right? People, people usually, usually scanning. You know, when a next log for G or something else comes out, like, oh, I don't know where it is in my environment. I need to go scan all this, scan all these things to figure out where it is. So that's kind of the things that can you figure out right away? Yeah, log for J is here, here, here. These are the things I need to go fix. And how, and then I think the hard part I always for Guac has been the use. Uh, I would say the the user interface or like how do we make it easy for the user? Right, the data is all there. You know, we you know we got all that stuff correlated properly. Now it's like, how do we, that's why the REST API came to be is like GraphQL is, you know, it can do some of these things, but it's hard for the user to use, right? Interact, interact with. So can we instead make it easy? The REST API, like you ask it a question or whether it's, you know, a continuous thing that kind of streams information back to you, whatever it is, but like you ask it a simple question and it's going to give you all the information like, okay, here's the information, you know, what relevant information, what kind of relevant queries do you want to ask it? So this is like one of the things like, okay, uh, I think the other things we discussed in that issue is like, you know, is there an S bomb for this thing? Do I, do I, uh, you know, uh, where does it live? Can I go find it again? Uh, you know, what is the, um, you know, most widely used dependency and so forth. But like, basically it's like, I think, how do we make the, how do we make the information more usable for the common user? Right. So like if I, if I, if I'm a solo developer kind of thing, how do I get some value out of it? And not as an organization kind of thing. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I think like one of the first things that you said was super kind of like paramount, right? So the platform was built for people that, or the system was built for, for people that know what an S bomb is. So maybe that's a great requirement. So maybe Google could be the platform that is like the easiest way to get an S bomb or the instant gratification or instant, instant reward is to understand how easy it is to generate an S bomb in like, you know, very fast because I don't, I want to ask your, your thoughts on protobomb or cyclone or SPX or whatever. Um, but maybe that's like, we can verify that assumption 
people know or people have to know what an S bomb is for them to like actually get utility from from work. Otherwise, it's probably like not you know that useful um, if you have no idea what an S bomb is. So teaching them that rapidly, they get the compliance check check box. You know, like this is how easy it is to get an S bomb. Good job. You have that checked off the list. Um, we now know they understand what an S bomb is and have an S bomb. And then next, once we have that S bomb, we can find in that S bomb the kind of like warning critical dependency or critical vulnerability detected in one of your dependencies, right? So that 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 would actually work of in terms of asking them to like what S bomb do you want to get? Like it's super easy, just do like this one step. Um here's your S bomb, here's the risk in your S bomb. Yeah. Um so I yeah, so I, I think I easy. think yeah, I think guac, I think we assume that you know, like we're coming in as we're not handholding the meta metadata creation piece, right? We're 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 coming at the point where you know you are already generating salsa. Like we don't want to be, you know, we don't want we don't want to step on salsa. Like hey, you know, salsa maintainers are there. Like they're the ones that are creating tools to generate salsa attestations. There's S bomb tools out there already that are generating you know S bombs, um, Cyclone DX, XPDX, whatever. Right? There's Proto Bomb. There's everything. So like there's S bomb tool generation, S bomb, all that kind of stuff has. There's a lot of tools and a lot of things out there, right? About it. Yeah. So now the kind of goal is like, okay, I, I agree. Like, I think maybe we should document, like, hey, if you don't know anything, right? Here's like, here's a starting point. It's like, okay, how, how do you generate some S bombs? How do you generate some salt status stations? I think that might be useful for sure. Because people yeah. are like, I don't have anything. Like, where do I start? So I think we're, I think Guac is coming in as it, it is a, it's a more advanced tool for sure, right? It's not coming in for like a, a person that walk up walks off the streets like you know how do i get started like there's there's no good getting started <laughs> i think there's like you know we don't really explain you explain to you what an s bomb is what a salt status station is i think we just like, assume you know all that stuff and that's we how you found source in the first place yeah <laughs> right you know that, so. that makes sense and, and being kind of like clear about that is actually probably like the the, the second best thing so i want to make sure that like this has been super interesting and i'm i I do want to also keep track of all the things that have been said. So I'm going to write those down. Um, the, I guess as a next step, like one of the things that we learned is, okay, um, people have to know what an S bomb is to make use of work. What other things are there? Like, you know, list five requirements that, that users kind of like need to fulfill. Sounds harsh, but probably true. Um, you know, to make use of the platform. And I guess that set is, is probably like a good starting point to then define like what's the first thing that you want to show. And then like how can we actually show that when when during the loading indicator um stage. Yeah. All right, right. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. That's been cool. Yep. All right. Um Keep going. So, uh, was there was no other topics on the agenda for today? Um, we're still, oh, you know, I think uh, Brennan left, but I think he's still working on the pub sub, or sorry, not the pub sub, but the uh, collector subscriber rearchitecture arch architecture for a uh, uh, 1.0 release. So, I think we're still figuring that piece out, but I think it's it's uh, an okay state for now. Um, what else was there? I am making some updates for the clearly defined uh, certifier just to make it a bit faster. Um, there's some some changes I'm making, so I'll put a push out a PR probably later today. Uh, I'm just doing some testings on it right now, and yeah, nothing else for me. Um, anybody else have any thoughts or comments? All right. Um, anybody else on the call have any other, uh, anybody else that's not a maintainer have any comments or any questions they would like to ask? And Tobias, if you wanted to update the issue, would send any kind of comments and, you know, we can all discuss more offline. Um, you don't have to wait for the maintainer meeting because like comment or make some, uh, uh, 
updates to the issue or create a new issue, whatever you like, and then we can you know discuss with everybody else yep. at the same time hey, online thanks. also. Yep. Awesome. All right, I think we can end a little bit early if there's no other topics. Uh, thank you, everybody. Talk to you guys next week. Thank Bye. you. Have a good one. Thank you.